Hello, I'm Chris Sarley, Senior Investment Research Analyst at Fund Calibre, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Job Curtis, Manager of the Elite Rated City of London Investment Trust. Job, once again, thank you for joining us and spending some time with us today. It's a pleasure. Um, let's start with the sort of scope of the fund. Obviously, you invest mainly in larger UK K companies. Um, they've done well in recent months for a few reasons. Could you um, maybe just give us an outlook for them in the coming year? Are they still cheap? relative to history? Are you confident sort of short to medium term, long term? Just just give us a bit of an insight on, on where you see things. Yes, the large UK, company, UK companies are fairly global by nature. And if you look at City London's portfolios, some two thirds of the underlying sales from our investing companies come from overseas. So we're really talking about the kind of global economy as well as the UK. And I think there are grounds to be positive. Our energy prices have come down a bit. There's fairly full employment in many markets and also the reopening of the Chinese economy after the long closure due to, is, is another positive for growth. So, um, you know, I think there are, are, are kind of reasons to be reasonably optimistic. I think um, when it comes to the UK stock market itself, um, you know, it is quite cheap relative to other stock markets. And obviously, it's got a different composition to, say, the American market, the big technology companies. But if you, even if you look at companies on a like-for-like basis, we we reckon the UK equivalent stocks are some 15 to 20% cheaper than those overseas. And this is to do with the fact that pensions on the UK now mainly invest in bonds and, and not in equities. And uh, it's left the UK market looking, in our view, very, very cheap um, relative to overseas markets. And, and, and let's stick with obviously all things UK. We most telegraph recession in history. I think the you know, that's the indicators of where we're going, whether that's where we do go, you know, not going to crystal ball or anything like that, but it, it already feels kind of like we're in a recession now. How how, how does that impact the, the, the dividends that companies pay? And maybe just give us a bit of an insight on, on where you see dividends. Yes. So, uh, I mean, in terms of whether the UK goes into recession, I mean, I think the latest thinking is we, we might narrowly avoid it, but it obviously is. There is a slowdown going on absolutely as as you as you say and i think that does impact uk companies in the kind of consumer discretionary area uh, it's kind of really consumer facing in particular and also you know we'd be wary of companies with too high a level of indebtedness i mean they're least able to pay, carry on growing the dividends or even paying the dividends in a downturn so we try and be you know have lim- have pretty limited exposure to that sort of area um or, Obviously, the UK, as I said, it accounts for only about a third. If you underline look underlying where the companies make their their sales in our portfolio, so um, uh, and you know, it, in the market, always looks forward, and you know, at some point, people the stock market will begin to anticipate the kind of next uh, recovery. So, um, you know, it's been a obviously the first period. of it was a terrible period for dividends and any through our investment trust structure we were able to carry on growing our dividend unlike dividends across the market fell then there's been a big recovery and so we're on a much sort of stronger footing now um and i think there are overall um you know apart from sort of certain areas of the market i, I would see dividend outlook look has been quite resilient just to tap into that resiliency which areas are you most confident in and what what are the couple you're a bit sort of wary of may i ask well, I think actually a lot of um, companies in the financial sectors um, have benefited from the move in interest rates we've we've seen over the last year. It's actually, uh, for various reasons, quite beneficial for, for quite a few companies in sort of banks, insurance, financial services. So that's an area where where good dividend growth has been experienced. Um, actually, we've had some excellent dividends in recent years from the commodity area, the miners, and uh, we're still getting good dividends, but the commodity price, they're linked, their dividends are linked really to the underlying commodities. And um, so we have seen some falls in the, in those dividends. So um, those would be two areas I'd highlight. And, and as I was just saying, clearly, um, you know, consumer discretionary stocks, um, which took a battering, um, you know, will face pressure from the cost of living crisis. We're sort of in a complete juxtaposition of markets from, say, two and a half, almost three years ago, where you know, dividends were completely gutted and, you know, for the focus on dividend reserves became really popular. We're now in a totally different world where, you know, dividends look attractive for the first, you know, really attractive now compared to what they've been, you know, in the past post the financial crisis. Have the, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, has are these companies learning and perhaps putting a bit further back or have they almost gone back to what they were doing 
Well, if you look back at uh, 2020, March 2020, April 2020, that there, there was um, a dramatic moment for dividends because a lot of companies just had to stop paying their dividends. They, their businesses were sh- shut down with the economy. In addition, other sectors um, like the banks were stopped from paying dividends by the regulators, and uh, and then other companies, you know, like the old companies, suffered from falling oil price, but. I think it also gave uh, quite a few companies a smoke screen. There's so many dividend cuts going on that they were able to sort of companies that had previously been kind of overpaying on the dividends. It gave them an opportunity to sort of reset back to a more sensible level. So, and from then, from that period, we've had a very good recovery in in 2021 and 2022 in in dividends in in the market. Um, but I would still say that the UK market is on a much firmer base for dividends than it has than it was pre. I think um, I don't see around companies that are kind of so obviously over distributing as they, as they were pre 2020 period. So um, I think you know, going forward, you've had the sort of easy part of the recovery in, in dividends. And I think it's now kind of more of a kind of, you know, a low single digit type of growth world for dividends. Um, but, uh, but I think it certainly feels to me as though the market's on a sounder footing from a dividend point of view. Okay. Um- Looking into your portfolio specifically, I mean, Shell and BP are two of the holdings and, and they've sort of come under a, a bit of pressure about high profits when, when gas and electric prices are so high amid the sort of cost of living. Um, should we be upset about this? Are, are, are the companies willing to pay windfall taxes and, and you know still invest? Maybe give us an, an investor's view and then perhaps on the other side of the fence, a CEO's view on that. Yes, well, I think from point of view of investors, um, I mean, the oil price plummeted in the first stage of 2020 and um, BP and Shell actually their profits also dramatic decline. They are linked to the oil and, and the gas price, and as a result, they both cut their dividends. Shell by two thirds and BP by 50 percent. So, I think one has to accept these are kind of commodity linked companies, and they're you know that they're, they're, they're going to have bad times, but also there've got to be times when you know they do well, and the shareholders, the owners, should benefit. And I think that that's really the investor, and from the CEO's point of view. And, you know, we we would align ourselves, you know, obviously with the CEO in many many respects, and you know, he he will be thinking, well, you know, if, if I'm need to make, I mean, it's a, you have to make massive investments in the oil and gas industry, um, uh, and if I'm supposed to be in making these investments, I have to sort of need make make, make a good return from what I'm investing, in, even though, and it's got to take account of the volatility, but it's not going to be a straight line t- type of return. So, I think it, you know, obviously. We're in a huge energy transition where we're going to move to a sort of lower carbon world, but that's going to only going to take place over a number of years. It, you know, we as we saw in 2022, we're still very dependent on oil and gas, and if we don't um, incentivize the companies to invest enough, I think it's going to make the problem worse. And because um, because oil depletes, and we'll, we will be short of oil and natural gas, which we still need. Okay, I mean, we've been in a world of you know high growth tech behemoths in the US, et cetera, dominating the headlines and, and the, the performance tables as well. But I mean, UK equity income sort of by contrast has been out of fashion in the past few years. But do, do you feel now sort of the time for people to revisit the sector, these old fashioned stocks? It feels like the the world the world has turned. What, I mean, what would you say to convince those sort of young and old investors that they should consider it as, you know, yeah. back to what it was, you know, 20 years ago, the bedrock of a portfolio, long-term compounding investments. Maybe just, just give us your view on that. Well, obviously, people will want global, you know, exposure as well, and exposure to to the, some of those um, companies you've mentioned. But, but if you if you need income or want income, then then the UK is highly attractive. It's the best yielding of the major markets. Dividend yielding provides a very good income, and of course, unlike kind of bonds or bank deposits, it it provides you with growth in income uh, and the potential for growth in income. So, I think f- for that point of view, it's attractive, and also. On very long-run studies um, of stock markets, um, income pays an important part of, of the return. I mean, it's not just about share price appreciation. It's actually a mixture of share price appreciation and the dividend or income return. And I think um, people ignore that at their, at their peril. So I think it still you know, plays an important role and um, f- for all investors. Uh, they obviously appreciate people will, will also want diversification in their portfolios. Um, Joe, thanks again for for joining us. I appreciate you giving us some time. Thank you. And if you'd like to learn more about the City of London Investment Trust, please visit funcalibre.com.